images in no, it. It's, if, you, if you're referring to your thumbnail, then uh, it'll be a slightly cropped image. But from my end, you're all in it. And we're live online now. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Lee Blackall uh, talking for the Teachers of Health Professionals Google Plus Community Group. And today we're talking to a group of four at the Bouverie Centre in Melbourne. Colin Cousins, I think, will be showing on your left. Colin, could you just wave so we can see? Yep. This Colin Cousins is the course coordinator of the Graduate Certificate of Family Therapy, uh, which is, uh, well, we're teaching a, talking about a subject called Concepts and Issues, uh, which is also a subject in their master's course on family therapy. And Nella Charles, could you, Nella, could you give us a little wave there? Nella is a family therapist, as is Colleen, uh, and um, uh, is a teacher in this subject concepts and issues, and a teacher of a particular group uh, focused on acquired brain injury. And of interest is Nella is piloting the teaching of skills in family therapy or skills and therapy through this medium. And we'll be talking a bit about that later. Karen Smith, hi Karen, is a teacher in this subject, also a family therapist. And Imogen O'Neill, hi Imogen, also a family therapist, a teacher in this subject, and a researcher. So thanks you four for joining us. How long have you, would you say you've been on this path of um, trying out uh, online communications technologies for the teaching of your field? Um, I'd say actively probably over the last eight to 12 months. Okay, thank you. Colleen, is it, all of you have been about that long, or some of you a little shorter or longer, do you think? Uh, maybe a bit less. Yeah. So relatively yeah. speaking, a fairly short amount of time on this. Um, Colleen, as the course coordinator, could you tell us a little bit about your feelings? Think back to that, that time ago. Tell us a little bit about your feelings um, about this, both you know the positive and negative feelings toward this. I'm starting to have flashbacks, Lee. Uh, <laughs> overwhelm, total overwhelm, um, yeah. because I I'm a therapist. Like I I'm not, uh, or I wasn't IT savvy. I certainly wouldn't say. I think that's a relative concept mm. in itself. But I I felt really overwhelmed by the technology, mm. um, and very concerned about what I perceive to be limitations in terms of the sorts of things we need to be teaching our students, mm. particularly around skills. Mm. Oh, well, we're seeing you've raised it. Nella, what can you tell us about what you've experienced with the teaching of skills uh, through this medium so far? Uh, uh, I guess um, in terms of our little cohort of ABI students, um, I, I was actually quite excited about the possibility of teaching online, they um, they all are rural students, so the reduction in the, the burden of travel and you know accessing the course more easily was was something that was really attractive. But um, and, and I must say the students are, are very um, excited and, and keen on learning online. Um, but it has presented lots of challenges actually, um, mm. that there, there are definite strengths in terms of um, access, accessing online resources, you know, demonstration videos that already exist on YouTube, for example, I think have been really enriching to the program and to this group of students. But in terms of teaching the actual skills component online, we, we're still struggling with um, struggles with the technology. Mm -hmm. In that some of the students have a really strong internet connection at work or at home, wherever they're accessing the, um, the connection and, and so that's working well. For others, they're struggling with that. So the quality of the connection is not always there and so we have an experience of it being quite fragmented at times. Um, so there's definite benefits but, but ongoing challenges that we're trying to iron out as we go along. So if I um, distill them down, the benefits are largely in the accessing of um, preformed information, but when it comes to yeah. asynchronous communication like what we're doing now, 
the biggest challenge is the variability of connectivity. So different people have yes. different bandwidths. Yes. Are you uh, have you discovered any strategies? Uh, sorry, Karen. Sorry, I was just going to say it's it's also the variety of learning experiences online. So if you think about you know traditionally we've taught theory through lecture format. Mm -hmm. But when you're teaching ideas and theory, it's not then just through, say, little mini lectures. It's also uh, through showing them. Yeah. yeah, pointing them to good stuff and a range of so stuff. There's, there's like a variety of ways that you can show them the mm -hmm. ideas. Yeah. Which I, is, mm -hmm. sorry. I think the students would say that they've appreciated mm -hmm. having a diverse range of mediums. Yeah. So they love the little video clips. They like something that we don't like doing, which is each Monday we come together and we talk about the readings that they've had during the week. And we found that sort of, you know, a bit confronting, but the students actually really enjoy it. So they like accessing a whole range of different um, types of information. It suits different learning styles. Mm. Um, but it is a little bit more, from my perspective, mm. a bit more fragmented. I don't know exactly what they're looking at or, I mean, I know what they're supposed to do, but it just sort of feels a little bit more fragmented to me as a teacher, I think, yeah. to get a grasp on what we're, what they're supposed to be learning or doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I feel a little differently to that in terms of, I, I don't, my experience is not so much of, of feeling fragmented or unclear about what students are accessing. The feedback from the students is that they absolutely love the range of um, mediums that are used, you know, so the videos, the, the readings, everything's there available, they can click on it, the, the article comes up. Um, the thing that I underestimated is that we come together and do a panel discussion at the end of each topic and we've also been experimenting with presenting slides and speaking to the slides, we hate it, <laughs> but the students love it. They love um, our faces. Like the power of that connection has been phenomenal. And um, you do that in, in this way. Do you, I, I think I have seen one or two of your videos where you literally sit all in the one room, yeah. um, notepads in hand, and you take turns in talking about your reflections on the week, the readings and the forums from the students and things like yes. that. Yes, yep. Okay. And the other the other thing that's been incredibly valuable, which was your idea, Lee, was having the, um, well, the panel discussion was your idea and also the, um, the student forum. So being able to write um, their thoughts and reflections, that's really taken off. And, really? Excellent. Yeah, and has provided, I, I think, um, a lovely adjunct to other more traditional forms of learning. Like they're, they're teaching each other things and yeah. uh, musing so about reading. So the, so the theory goes, it doesn't always work that way. I think you might be lucky with the type of students you've got in your course that are open to that form of communication. Equally though, it, um, it might be the intimacy that you've got in your group. Because how many, how many students are you talking about in your course at the, or your subject at the moment? We've got around 22. So it's a and nice intimate group compared to say 200 students yeah. where the forums yeah. are just dead quiet because it's just too many people and it's not intimate yeah. enough. I have to say though the backdrop to the forum and why I think it's working so well is mm -hmm. that we've run a couple of intensive days of workshops yes. Yes. so the students met and this is their way of staying connected with one another yes. and out of the 20 I'd say there'd be 15 who are pretty active. Wow. There's probably a quieter yeah. cohort. That's fine, that's good odds, that's good odds uh, oh, speaking across all of them. third who have not accessed the yeah. forum. A third, third of students, don't you? Yeah, so seven. Who, ha who we haven't seen on the forum. Yeah, about a third. And okay. then, uh, you yeah, know, a good number of, say, eight who are frequent yeah. kind of contributors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those third, those third that haven't accessed, do you know that they haven't even looked at it or are they, are they lurking? Are they looking at it and not, not responding? We're trying to find that out. Oh, okay, I can help you find that. That's all right. We'll look at that afterwards. Okay, some good pearls of wisdom there. I mean... Uh, it's very interesting to me that, that that dynamic of you guys not enjoying the summary videos that you do and I'd like to ask you a bit about why that is in detail and then it's interesting to me that 
even though you must be giving body language through this video that you're not enjoying this experience, that the students must be enjoying you not enjoying the experience, I guess. But <laughs> why, why, uh, why is it that you think you guys don't like doing that? Do you feel like in the spotlight a bit, or is it something else? I, I quite enjoy doing our panel discussions yeah, where we have a conversation because um, it's interactive and some good ideas come up. I hate doing the piece to camera where I'm introducing a topic. Oh, I see. There's a number of reasons why I hate that. Um, Colleen's given me the idea and I, I forgot to do it. Um, so this is a tip if you have to do this. Yes. Is, it's is to cover the, um, turn the screen off or cover the screen because it's a very awkward, you feel like you're talking to yourself in the mirror. Yes. And it affects my ability to um, give what should be a five minute little talk. And so then that five little minute little talk takes me like an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> By my and then I'm sick of myself, I'm slightly shitty, I'm trying to cover it up, I want to get it done. Yeah. <laughs> so, and there's something about when you give a lecture, you know, it's there, it's a, but then it's ephemeral and it's gone. Yeah. So you're not accountable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's something about wanting to get it right. Mm. You know, so if you say something, there's an opportunity to edit, redo it. You feel like you want to say it properly, whereas if you give a lecture, I think when I give a lecture, I say it a lot better than what I do when I mm. tape myself. So there's still a lot of learning and experience to be had there for that to be a comfortable thing. Yeah. That's your answer to my, my question. I was going to follow on there. You say there's still a lot of learning, so you can perceive a future where you'll be comfortable in this format yes. and be able to give the concise. Yes. You just need yes. some practice. Okay, great. Good tip too about covering up the screen. I too find it distracting having your own face pushing back at you. Yeah. So, Colin, so are you going to add to that? Oh, I guess the other thing I was just thinking about my comfort in uh, giving a lecture is that you're getting feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you're not getting your point across, you've got 20 people in the room who are kind of going, what? Yeah, and you can yeah. attend to that. But when you're looking at a screen, you have no feedback. Yeah. Um, no immediate feedback. You could use some mechanisms to, achieve, to bring um, asynchronous feedback, like a quick three three question quiz at the end of it or something like that. Uh, but then that's not going to help you adjust immediately. You'll have to adjust it in the in the next one, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Look, I, I just think I, I had to do a whole series of introductory uh, DVD, uh, you know, videos for the course. I, I hated it. <laughs> it took me so <laughs> long. Yeah. And I left. I spent a whole afternoon, and I left the building, and I still hadn't done it. And I spoke to a colleague on the way out who said, "Oh, just turn your monitor off." And I'm like. Oh my God! So then I came back in the next morning, <laughs> and I did it within half an hour. I got all of them done because I turned the blessed monitor off. So yeah. that is that is the pearl. Okay, well, strong tip. Look, we're running out of time. Can we get first? Uh, you've already got some good, valuable tips, but now think back to when you were back and you hadn't experienced this technology much before. You're feeling quite threatened and overwhelmed, and and all sorts of emotions. Give advice back to yourself. Um, you know, it, it's not a foregone, a foregone conclusion that people have to use this technology, but people like me see that there are several affordances in this that aren't being realised, and it's a, an unfortunate kind of position for people to be resisting it and not not giving themselves the opportunity to experience and then think creatively in this space. So, could you give some advice back to yourself back then, um, along those terms? Can I, I'm going to jump in here. The thing that was made it so much more difficult than it needed to be for me is what I guess all of us face, that running from one thing to another. So we'd have a Google Hangout practice kind of meeting with you, but I'd be running out of a session or I'd, you know, finishing, have, you know, half finished another task. Yeah. My advice is if you are serious about taking on this um, way of working to block out good amounts of time where you've got designated time to commit to just learning this stuff. You, um, yeah, it's really hard to do if you're chopping and changing it because by the next week you'll forget and yeah. I think it really does involve a lot of practice yeah. um, and practice 
as you're developing the real content for the course, so not not just wasting time, but actually developing something that you're going to use. Applied. Mm -hmm. Applied, yeah. So I can just back that up too, Colleen, quickly. I mean, reflecting on the weekly or even monthly sessions that we were having in the lead up to the preparation for this subject, and then we got down and I think put three to maybe five days in total of just intensive time. It, it was so much more valuable than those fragmented meetings that we're having in the months prior. So that's a very good point. Thank Absolutely. you very much. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. I, I reckon start with the stuff that you think will add value to the course too. The other issue is why you're doing it. And um, if if it's imposed, and may well, it may well be that's imposed, um, that makes it a bit harder because I think, you know, I think there's a lot that um, is enhanced through online learning. I think the jury's still out around some of the skills. Um, and we've got a blended program for most of the students except ABI. So, you know, I feel really excited about it because I think there's a whole lot of benefits. Mm -hmm. You know, students can access things when it suits them. There's a variety of modalities, etc. So there's lots of great things. I think we still need to evaluate the actual um, micro skills component. And maybe it's just because we haven't figured out how best to do that. But you know, if you can start gradually and start with the things that um, you actually believe will add to the um, what the students experience, then you can familiarise yourself with all the um, you know equipment and um, you know computers, etc. On in something that you're happy to do, and mm. learn about it through that. Mm. But what you're saying is be clear about what it is you're trying to do. Yeah. What, yeah. yeah. Mm. And I guess I would just add quickly, just having access to technical support is mm. oh, yeah. really yeah. important, and that that's accessible when you need it at the time, mm. because it's very anxiety provoking to have things planned, and you know perhaps students are struggling at their end with connecting, and you need someone on hand that can. I'd guide you through that. And just to clarify that, that's not somebody at the end of a general phone number that may or may not be able to help you. That is somebody you can literally walk out your door, up the hall, and grab yeah, them. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And you yeah. do have someone in the, in the cool. form of Bridget, Bridget Gray, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Great. And in, she's only informally assigned to the role. She's not formally assigned to the role, is she? Mm, so uh, that's, that's great. You, you know, most teams probably have a person within them that can informally support the technical skills. It's just they haven't been recognised yet, and then perhaps it's needed necessary that they're given the resources to be able to help people. Imogen, would there be something you could sh share with us? Um, like that? Not that much more, but just that for me, once I got my head around the technology and what it involved, it all seemed a lot easier. So at first it seemed quite overwhelming, but once I sort of was more familiar with what we were doing, um, then that I could see the possibility in the technology rather than just seeing it as, you know, a burden. Um, yeah. So, and I think it is important, as Colleen said, to for that to be to learn the technology as you need it with a particular task yeah. in mind, because mm -hmm. um, then you really get the chance to um, develop your skill in that area. So. Um, yeah. You know, you've got to put some slides together for the lecture and you've got to do a voiceover. Okay, it's a great opportunity to um, learn about the technology right then and there around a task that you've got to do rather than just sort of general learning, mm -hmm. I guess, if that makes sense. It does make sense. Uh, I don't, I, I'm going to have to push it a bit over time because uh, I want to ask something that is important for people in my position. Is um, at, at those early days where we were first meeting, it was it was probably unfortunately felt like you were walking down the Woolworths cheese aisle where the choice was just too much of what you could and couldn't do and what things were like and not like. And I was that playing that role of showing you all these different ways of approaching things and you'd come back at me with all these questions and challenges and then I'd say something else that might have been beneficial. Do you think it would have been better just for somebody like myself to say, do it this way, learn it this way and then we'll see where we are once we've tried it that way? Or do you think it's still beneficial to see all the options, reflect on them, and have all of that time, sort of uh, fragmented time, looking at it, and then make a decision when it feels right? 
Um, I think that there has to be a, a stage which is a bit messy um, and you have to look at all the options. I think, I don't know what Colleen would say, you have to look at a range of options anyway um, and then narrow down from there maybe. Um, I think a little differently. I think that some of the most productive time I had with you, Lee, were those days, we had a couple of intensive days in here actually, where you were on the other computer, where, you know, I, we talked about, you know, the forum and doing the panel discussion and they were your ideas that had come from, you know, perhaps other courses mm. and we talked about how, to, how I could use those ideas and it was great. Mm. The, for you to have very specific things to say, I know that this can work and this is how I reckon it would link with what you're trying to achieve. Um, that just felt for me, um, I don't know, really grounding, like I knew where I was going, I trusted that. Well trust might be the key word there because I don't think it would have worked unless we had some level of relations that we could trust oh. it, whereas most other people we don't have those relations so it, I don't think the it would work to say do it this way. It's a, like Karen says, it would feel imposed. You haven't arrived at this point either through. Oh, uh, but but I think the backdrop was that I was showing the range of cheeses. Yeah. But you said, come and look at the you know the blue veins, pretty good. Like you you kind of took me over there. <laughs> um, so you kind of did both, really. Okay. I, I think right. also maybe even just a little bit more structurally in terms of because you have so much knowledge, but to say. Uh, if you want to teach this thing, you can do it this way, bang, bang, bang. If you're going to have a small group discussion, you can do it this way, bang, bang, you know. So maybe linking. Um, and templates, um, okay. Just make it because, you know, we're overwhelmed and we don't understand anything in the beginning and how you translate face to face to an online mm. platform, you know. Okay, thanks for that tip. And just to finish. Quick little soundbite, where to now? What's what's your ambitions now? What are you going to do to add to it or master it? Um, I think the thing that's really helped us is an acknowledgement that this year is going to be good and it's going to be good enough um, and that's kind of freed us up to think what is it we want to do next year and I think the next year we would want to develop some of the videos um, that we make. We'd want to make sure all our lectures have, you know, voiceovers or because not all of them have had that. We just want to, um, I guess, develop it, yeah. find find more resources, um, yeah. you know, audiovisual resources. So just build on what we've got, consolidate and build. Okay. I think that's true that the the task of imparting ideas and information. I, so I think we want to enrich the way we do that. In terms of skills, I think there's still a lot to oh, be yeah. thought about mm, there. And And um, well, I think we have to really we have to really test out if that's viable. Mm. You know, um, and we're about to really move into that phase, I guess. And if mm. the technical issues continue, that that's a real problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the bandwidth uh, issue. By, by skills, we simply mean you know the skills for interviewing family members, mm -hmm. several people mm -hmm. in the room. So some te you know some counselling will be one on one. A specific mm -hmm. intervention and technique might be easier, but mm -hmm. when it's groups or families where there's these dynamics between people, and a core skill is managing that, that's a harder thing mm -hmm. to do online. Even that that I, I would imagine the one on one therapy. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks very much. So that's moving forward. Uh, thank you, uh, Colleen, uh, Nella, Karen and Imogen for talking to us. Uh, that's some valuable insights for the stage you're at, talking back to people who are just entering in that stage you were in about eight months ago. That's what we're primarily recording this interview for. So thanks very much for giving us your time and I'll be in touch with to let you know how it was received and what ideas and who knows, maybe we can uh, get them onto a similar platform so you can see their work and they can see your work and maybe you'll both benefit in the, in the mid-term. So thanks very much for joining us. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Lee. Bye. Bye.